Hello and welcome to a new video. Today you join me in a special place. We are not out and about in the electric Bruno Zoo as you would expect, but we are sitting here in my office and of course that has, has a reason. Um, we need to discuss some things about sustainability of uh, electric cars and um, I have to tell you my very recent problem. The bottom line is my Renault Zoe, which uh, has followed us all in all the past videos since she was new with me. We went up to uh, 2300 meters in the, in the Swiss snow. We went down to the palm trees of uh, Barcelona together. We passed the 100,000 kilometer mark together. Um, that car has failed on me just recently. Uh, I had a major problem with the power electronic uh, controller, PEC, and uh, also with the main bearing of the electric motor. So in order to drive it uh, further, I would need to replace the electric motor and the PEC of the car with a total cost of about uh, an estimate of about 8,000 euro. The car is only four years old, it would still be in warranty, as I have five years warranty in the car. But the problem is that, uh, you know, that we passed the 100,000 km mark together, which is uh, kind of the end of the warranty as well. So uh, we're over 100,000 km, not much, but it's uh, 116,000 km. So Renault would have agreed to uh, pay uh, 3,000 euro towards uh, the repair of the car uh, I still would need to invest 5,000 euro in a car that uh, is uh, technically um, and that's sad to say technically old now uh, and that's the main problem I want to discuss today uh, we have a problem within the car industry at the moment uh, I think there is a transition that has to be made uh, towards more upgradable cars and sustainable cars. The business model behind, uh, let's say, the normal car sales is still from the last century, where a car will last um, a decade or something like that. Whereas today, every year, the technology changes, something new comes, and we need to find models that we can uh, follow these developments without having to scrap the whole car from a resource point of view. Renault tried it with uh, the battery upgrade which never really really uh, took off so the, the, the problem is still there and uh, I understand Renault that it wants to uh, of course it needs to make uh, business by uh, selling new cars so uh, nothing against uh, Renault here in this case um, but I had to think about my own decision. I could have said um, I absolutely want to repair the car just from a um, sustainability point of view, but I would invest uh, a big amount of money in uh, just old technology. So I had to take the hard decision to um, let my beloved Renault Zoe go and uh, I have ordered the new Renault Zoe ZE50 um, which will help me to uh, let's say to continue on the road of sustainability it will um, it will be able to fulfill my needs also for long distance traveling even more than the car I had uh, I have a I, let's say I live between uh, Switzerland and Ireland and the, 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 let's say the, the journey from Switzerland to Ireland in the, the 22 kilowatt hours uh, Zoe was uh, difficult to say the least whereas uh, the new Zoe would I mean should be able to do it uh, nearly as good as a standard petrol car I would say that's at least my hope so I had to take a decision which is uh, not a good one in an environmental point of from an environmental point of view. I'm fully aware of that, and uh, I I I don't feel let's say I don't feel good in in, in having taken that decision. But um, I thought a lot about all the options, and in the end, that was the best option for me. 
but I, I want you to discuss uh, how you would have uh, decided in my situation and what you think uh, what uh, the industry should be doing about uh, this problem of the technology cycles getting shorter and shorter and all the energy that goes into manufacturing one of these cars and how we can save these, this energy uh, into the future without having to scrap the car every time uh, a new development step uh, comes up. So uh, this will be important. I think also Renault will have to find new solutions for, for, for new markets in the future. And I'm very sad that I had to let go of uh, my Renault Zoe. The new uh, ZT50 will be here in uh, some time and uh, I will continue my journey, my electric journey of course. I will share my thoughts, I will share my experiences with it. Uh, you might be able to join me on even longer travels in the future and uh, I, wa I really want to have that discussion about uh, development cycles and a new business model in the automotive industry of upgrading cars and uh, uh, let's say saving some uh, resources for the future. I think, that's, I think that's the whole point in building uh, environmental friendly cars in the future. So that's uh, my situation at the moment. I hope uh, you want to discuss uh, these things here below in the, in, in the comments with me and please share your thoughts as well. I'm very interested to hear about them and I think the next time we will either see each other in my garage uh, when I will talk about uh, the ele electrification project of my Renault 4 CV which is still on the way and still very nice or uh, when I will be driving my new Renault Zoe ZE50. Um, I have ordered it in a very unusual nice color by the way so um, we'll see if you like it or not uh, in the meantime please uh, stay tuned if you want to go back to see uh, the first videos with the Renault Zoe in the snow that would be lovely there four years old now um, but sadly that's uh, the end of the car now I'm really sad but um, yeah of course life goes on and uh, I hope you stay tuned and I hope that I will see you again soon here take care bye bye